Yeah, well, first and foremost, you know, we had a great quarter. Our transformation plan is absolutely on track. You, you mentioned some of the highlights. Our efficiency initiative came in on the high end. We announced 60 to 80, and we'll, we'll be there already at 60. In terms of revenue, you know, it really is the medical business. We're the number one medical business in Canada, number one Canadian LP internationally, operating in over 12 countries. And there's plenty of profitability internationally. We have the largest shipment ever to Israel. We're number one in flour in Germany. And it really is the same playbook, country after country after country. Great products, great regulatory expertise, and it's portable, which is what gives us some optimism at the point in time in which the U.S. gets there. You mentioned the Canadian rack business, and, you know, it really hasn't bottomed out yet. We're seeing a rational pricing, higher level inventories than we'd like. And, you know, we got there about a year ago in really recognizing that you had to have, you know, a real focus on those core areas where you can make some money. I think it's going to be about another 9 to 12 months until the rec market stabilizes. When that happens, you'll have fewer LPs. Today, there's twice as many as there was a year ago. Right pricing, and then, you know, at that point, we'll be in a strong position. But staying in that market has benefits, as we saw in the great deal we cut in the Netherlands. And you're definitely going to see a movement of medical towards rec. And those companies that succeed at medical definitely will have the upper hand with rec. How does, it con how does the, the rec market bottom out? I mean, is it just a rationalization of the number of LPs operating um, so that the pricing pressure isn't as great? I mean, you cited pricing pressure as the main reason why the revenues overall, as a, on a total basis, were down in the consumer market. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you've got really sort of three drivers. Right now, there's no barriers to entry. You have 250 LPs. There were 125 a year ago. Secondly, there's excessive amount of inventory, so people are willing to give it away, even at a loss. And, you know, when you combine all of that together with folks that are just willing to sort of get there and, and just sort of fight with that, it's just not rational. We've right-sized our focus and really gotten down to the core, focus on premium categories where you can make money, and clearly that's, you know, the best way to handle it. But the medical business is the exact opposite. You're seeing steady margins. You're seeing growth. You're only seeing a handful of companies that can successfully navigate it. So none of those pressures, which is why we're so pleased to be the number one Canadian medical company and why Canadian medical really is the bright spot of cannabis globally. Yep. Miguel, thanks for your thoughts. Appreciate it. Stock's up 5.6%. Thank you so much.